In this video, we cover Pope's latest message to COP28 delegates. Friends, you do not want to miss this. It's very prophetic. It's timely for us. Every Bible-believing Christian, every prophecy-studying Christian should know this and understand for themselves. Let's pray before we get right into it. Father, please, we pray once again that you be with us as we go into our study. Teach us wondrous things from your word. Let us understand your message that you want to teach us while we live in this day and age. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, welcome back to another presentation with Lighthouse Beams Ministry. This is one of the events that I do not think we should neglect. That's why we bring it to the forefront. We were walking, we are walking at the moment, kind of busy on the ground, dealing with practical work, and we haven't been focusing more on media, but we might, uh, we will soon come back to share some things again. Next week, we'll, Lighthouse Beams Ministry will be having its convention. Please pray for us, those who are supporting us one way or another. God bless you. Um, support us in your prayers as well. Let's get right into it. Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Walker, page 117 and 118. It says, In the time which we live, in the time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power. Sunday law is his distinctive power who has taught to change times and law and to oppose the people of God who firmly, who stand firmly to honor him by keeping the true, only true Sabbath, the Sabbath creation as unto, holy unto the Lord. That's what God's people are doing. So what are we supposed to do? We are called to expose the wickedness of the man of sin. God's people are supposed to expose the wickedness of the man of sin. Now, look at this. Volume 5 of the Testimonies, page 4, 5, 2, paragraph 1. It says, the Sunday movement is making its way in darkness, friends. The devil is not publicly revealing his plans to the people. He's not stupid. He does not make it public for everyone to know. He is cunning, he's deceptive, he's, he's full of deception. He works in ways that he tries to trick people into what, lure people into what, uh, into falling into his trap. That is what he's doing. He's walking in darkness. Now, the leaders are concealing the true issues and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whither the undercurrent is trending. And I say, a lot of Adventists unknowingly, ignorantly getting involved in what the papacy has given to the world as the solution, the, uh, is the thing that is going to bring in the Sunday law. I'm going to show you just what it is. Um, its profession is mind-like and apparently like Christian or apparently like, uh, like Christian, but but when it shall speak, it will reveal the spirit of a dragon, soon to be. It will be our duty to do all. It is our duty to do all in our power to invent the threatening danger. Friends, if you know the message of the three angels, you are to invent the wall of the danger that is coming. What should you do? Study the work of the men of sin to expose him. We also... We should endeavor to disarm prejudice by placing ourselves in a proper light before the people. We should bring, we should bring before them the real question at issue. What is the true issue? The papacy is gonna try to bring a false issue, a false solution. Thus interposing the most effectual protest against measures to restrict liberty of conscience. No one should restrict liberty of conscience because there is the channel through which God communicates to people, friends. Now, Matthew chapter 24, I want to bring you there before we go into the current event updates. The very thing that will happen it at the end, right at the end, before Jesus comes back again, before the persecution of God's commandment keeping people is carried out, is... Yeah, the framework has already begun. We're going to show you just that. Um, what is it? Verse 4, it says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5, it says, Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. 
they seek, it says, you shall years of wars and rumors of wars. Friends, are we hearing that now? Hamas, Israel, will, uh, Russia, they're fighting up there. That's what the Bible predicted would happen. Um, you shall see, see that you have been no trouble for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. There is not the end. If you see those things, the end is not yet. But what shall be the sign of the end? How should we know when the end is near? We'll go on to see. Verse 7. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And these shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. All these things, problems, calamities, crisis coming upon the earth. But... Verse 8 actually explains the signal by which we should understand how it should lead towards the end of the world. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In other translation, it says the beginning of childbirth or birth pangs. Now we know that when the child is about to be delivered, the frequency of the contraction becomes quite frequent. That is to say, that is giving signs that the baby is about to be born. The frequency of the calamities and the crisis that is coming upon the world should actually give us an indication of the nearness of the coming of the Son of Man. The more frequent it becomes, the more we should expect that the king is at the door. But before the king actually steps into the door or comes to get his people home, there should be a great persecution. Verse 9, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations. Ye shall be hated of what? How many nations? All nations. Why shall all nations hate you? Why shall all nations hate you? Let's go to Revelation chapter 8 and verse 3. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath, of a fornication. You see, the wine that Babylon gives to the people, what does wine represent? Doctrine. The doctrine that the, the, the Babylon gives to the people, the man of sin gives to the people, make them drunk or lose their mind. And then after they get drunk, they are filled with wrath. And when they are filled with wrath, you are hated of all nations. But what... What are you specifically hated? Why do they come after you? Now, when we go back again to the book of Matthew, there's a missing language there. The Bible doesn't explain, but if you read closely, you can grasp it. After all these crises and conflicts and calamities fall upon the world, they're going to blame God's people for these things. After these things culminate, after it becomes more frequent, you shall be persecuted. That is what the Bible is saying. If anything, what Matthew is telling us is that you will be blamed for the calamities that are coming upon the world. Let me show you that from the spirit of prophecy. Um, while appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all the maladies, that's great controversy, page 589, 590. You will bring diseases and disasters until popular cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now he is at work in accidents and calamities by land and by sea. By where? By land and by sea. In great conflagration, in furious tornadoes, in terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes, in every place and in the thousand forms Satan is exercising his power, the great and then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who are serving God, keeping the Sabbath holy, the law of God holy, are causing these evils to come upon the world. Friends, you see, when all these calamities happen upon men, it says calamities, I underline calamities by land and by sea. And friends, all these things, if we could, we could summarize it with one word, that now it is being popularized and used around the world. What is it? Climate change. Climate change. Calamities both by land 
and by sea. Where do you find calamities by land and by sea in the Bible? Let's go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. The last, very last thing out of all the plagues, pestilences that are coming upon the world, the crisis, the last one, it says earthquake. It says earthquakes in diverse places. Earthquakes is actually calamity. It's actually tempest, and it can be referred to as in land, on land, and on sea. Now, here it says earthquakes, and we know earthquakes happen on land, but the word that is given there for earthquakes is G4578, seismos in Greek. Seismos can also be referred to tempest, at sea, Matthew chapter 8, verse 24 says, And behold, there arose a great tempest, a great seismos, G4578, in the sea. Where? In the sea. That is when Jesus and the disciples were out at sea. So, tempest, both land, calamities on land and on sea. When calamities on land and on sea is seen frequently happening, who should be blamed? God's people will be blamed. Now, let me tell you this. Climate change is actually true. Some people think it's not true. It's actually true. There's a crisis that is very real as we speak. But the solution that the papers is going to be offering, which we're going to talk about, is erroneous. It uses a real crisis in presence of false solution. Now, you see, crisis, the problem of climate change actually begin with sin. Sin caused climate change. When did it begin? Let's go right to Genesis. Genesis in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 61 and 62, it says, After the sin, Adam and Eve were no longer to dwell in Eden. In humility and unutterable sadness, they bade farewell to the beautiful home and went forth to dwell upon the earth where rested the curse, rested the curse of sin. The Bible says, Cast be the ground, you should eat from your sweat of your hand. This earth was cursed, and because of the curse, leaves fell, flowers fade, the temperature changed. The atmosphere, red writing, one so mild and uniform in temperature, was now changed to marked change, subject to marked change. Global warming began right when men left the Garden of Eden, when they stepped out of the Garden, when sin came right into this earth, and the Lord was merciful, and the Lord mercifully provided them with a garment of skin as a protection from the extremes of heat and cold. We see that now. Yes, extreme heat and cold. Global warming, friends. And then you can see flowers faded and fell, leaves also fell. That was the first sign of decay, first sign of climate change. Climate change came as a result of sin. The papacy knows just that. Look at what he says. Catholic social teaching is fundamental to uh, tackling world issues, the Pope says. Let's read what he says. Pope Francis on Wednesday said, The church is not an expert in the global health crisis, this pandemic that went, took place, but Catholic social teaching is fundamental to the healing, to healing the issues faced by the world today. Where are those teachings found? The Pope said his work on healing said his this work on healing is facilitated of facilitated through the close release related principles found in the compendium of the social doctrine of the church. Now let's go right into the compendium of the social doctrines of the church. This is um, a Catholic website, a Catholic culture, under the title Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Church, chapter six. Point two eight five. One of the doctrines says Sunday is a day that should be made holy by charitable activity, devoted, devoting time to family and relative, as well as to the sick and infirm and the elderly. Now, look here, pause. He's going to mingle some truth, the way in which he cl treats climate change. He's going to mix some good things with some evil. He's not going to go full-blown evil. It has to be something that looks real. It has to be look from the outset. 
Christian like, Christ like, but twisted. Jump down to blue writing. The Lord's Day should always be lived as a gift, as a day of liberation that allows us to take part in the festival gathering in the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. Now you can read the rest. So, what is he saying? Time for family, time for spending with those in need. Does the Bible say that? Sabbath was made for the good of men. Jesus said it is good to do good on the Sabbath. That's right. That's right. But see how Father is, is bold in going. Point 286 says, Public authority, it is their duty to enforce it upon the people to keep those holidays. For reason of economic productivity, citizens are not denied time for rest and divine worship. You see now how he is trying to use the government to enforce those things? Employers have an analogous obligation regarding the employees. Christian in respect of religious freedom and of the common good of all should seek to have Sunday as the holy day, church's holy day recognized as what? As legal holidays. Who makes things legal? The government. They have to give everyone a public example of prayer, respect, and joy, and defend their tradition. Friends, Sunday worship is tradition. It's not biblical. It's tradition. This is what is pushing. I'm just going to, I'm going to show you right now. Tradition is a precious contribution to the spiritual life of the society. Tradition, friends. It's what Catholics all about. Pushing tradition. Mingling truth with error. Now, this is the message of Pope. Oh, unfortunately, he couldn't be at COP28, although he promised to be there. He sent a representative, and this is what he said. I am going to read an extract of the address that Pope Francis was to deliver here which will then be published in full. The destruction of the environment is an offense against God, a sin that is not only personal, but also structural, one that greatly endangers all human beings, especially the most vulnerable in our midst, and threatens to unleash a conflict between generations. Friends, what is he calling? Climate change are seen. Breaking climate laws are seen. Who is saying that? The papacy is saying that. How should we combat climate change? Laudato Si. Point number 237 of Laudato Si. What does it say? We have to keep Sabbath holy like the Jewish Sabbath. We're going to see that just now. But he is already offering solution. And he says those who break those things. The laws, the solutions that we come up with, they are committing sin, which is not only individual. If you are breaking the Sabbath in your house, you are not the, the papal Sabbath, by the way. You are not committing a sin, individual sin of yourself, but it's a structural sin. You are breaking the laws of the fabrics of our society. That's what it's saying. He's saying, do not break climate laws. You are the one that is blamed for causing the environmental crisis that is coming upon the world. Did we hear that? Did the spirit of prophecy say that? Did the Bible say that? Wow. Let's go on. Friends, that is too much. Let's go to this article that continues explaining this. Um, wh what these men said. They said the destruction, you, that's what he said. The destruction of the environment is an offense against God, a sin that is not only personal, but structural. What are they saying? Breaking climate laws is an offense. If you break the climate laws that they said, you are committing a serious offense. Friends, let me take you back to the quotation that I saw. If you missed it, the quotation continues to say something. When we continue the quotation from Great Controversy, page 589, it says, The class that have provoked the displays of heaven will be charged as the troublers of the people, the um, charge all their troubles upon the class that have provoked the displays of heaven will charge all their troubles upon those obedient to God's commandment. Commandments is a perpetual reproof. 
to transgressors. Now look at the bold writing. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. What, friends? You are violating the Sunday Sabbath. You are committing an offense to God. It is a sin of no small magnitude. You should be punished for that. Breaking Sunday Sabbath is an offense to God. Friends, do you see that? Friends, these things are very prophetic. We are not just wasting time speaking about this. The papacy is pushing Sunday and many people are still sleeping. Wake up. Wake up, friends. It's no time to sleep. What is the papacy saying? It is a sin, he said, that greatly endangers all human beings, especially the most vulnerable in our midst and threatens to unleash a conflict between generations. Friends, something serious. Now, let's move on. Cope, Pope Francis to Cope 28, environmental destruction is an offense against God. Now, it's the same thing that we already covered again. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing this evil. The class will provoke red writing. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. That this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. Now let's further go on. <clears throat> Now, look at the second part of the red writing. It says, it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. That's what we saw. Now, look at this. That this sin has brought calamities which will not cease. Will it cease? It will not cease. You have to convert. Those who do not convert, you are causing the climate change to go even continuously and go bigger and bigger. It will keep going on until we enforce it by law and persecute those who break those laws. Well, that's exactly what the papacy is saying. Pope Francis should die warning for humanity. See greater omens, destructions in the world. He said, you have to expect more. You have to expect more until we can come into grasp or make laws that will prevent people from breaking those laws. We should expect greater omens of destruction, he's saying. Friends, praise God for the spirit of prophecy. We knew this long time ago. We told it like stories. Now it's happening before our very eyes. You can see. He says, despite how seamlessly bad things are, the Pope says his vision for the future appears with great omens of greater destruction and desolation. More things are coming up on the earth, he's saying. More things are coming. We have to cause people to stop breaking the climate law, especially the Sabbath law, the papal Sabbath. In message to Pope 28, ailing Pope calls environmental degradation structural sin. Where should we go to? The compendium of the com of the social doctrine of the church. What does it say? Keep Sunday holy. How should we deal with it? Force it upon the masses. Make it legal holiday. Then we should deal with the uh, conflict that we have, the world issue. What is the greatest one that they are pushing? Climate change. Friends, look at what he says. Filled with the rumbling of war, growing injustice, famine, poverty and suffering. And although this horizon seems bleak and disconcerting, with omens of even greater destruction and desolation, <laughs> Romans of even greater destruction upon the world. He has been, pub he is on a mission to evangelize the world, friends, while we are still sleeping. Many of us are still sleeping. I'm talking to Adventist friends, all my Adventist friends. We have the three angels' message, the last message of a perishing world, says Testimony for the Church, volume 9, page 19. The message that distinguishes between life and death. The destiny of all hangs upon that message. And yet we are not doing anything. 
while the papers is evangelizing. Friends, what are you doing for Jesus? And even more, how much have you done for him? And even more, what have you done for yourself, your own spiritual life? In March 7, 321, we know that the first Sunday law was legislated. We know that the papers, he likes to go and hold, shake hands with the government. That is what the Bible talks about, the kings fornicating with Babylon. Babylon is a church, prostituting church, church that has left God, all the prophets professing to be God's church, leaving God and shaking hands with the worldly powers because her own truth, the Bible truth, she doesn't have the Bible, biblical truth. She goes to the government, this word of the state, to enforce a decrease in laws. The first one was declared in March 7, 321, where Constantine the Great actually made a decree. Sunday, which was, this is from Encyclopedia, or rather Wikipedia. Sunday, which was sacred for Christians, a day of Christ's resurrection, and to the Roman sun god Sol Invictus was declared an official day of rest. On that day, markets were banned and public offices were closed. That is actually what happened in the Dark Ages. Friends, we are shifting back to the Dark Ages. Last year, I already showed you guys that there was sun worship. This was the official logo you can see on the screen. COP27 taken place in Egypt. We saw this was the logo. They explained their own logo. Uh, the middle writing, it says, the logo mixed the African and Egyptian cult uh, cultural identities. It depicts the African sun embracing the sun of Aten. The sun of what? The sun of Aten, whose rays signs on a new horizon, announcing the Egyptian ministry in a statement on Wednesday. The uh, Aten is a sun God worship during the era of Pharaoh King Akhenaten. Akhenaten, friends, the old and pagan deities, old and pagan sun worship is back. Sun worship is back. Sunday worship is back. Where is the root of Sunday worship? It has pagan roots, friends. A good, a true crisis, but a false solution. Worship the sun. It's all about the wrong kind of worship system in the last day. Worshiping the image of the beast. And this is from their own website where they explain the meaning of it. The sun, the ethan of the sun. Friends, you can see and read all for yourself. What does the Aten represent? The Aten was a disc of the sun and originally an aspect of what? Aspect of Ra. The Aten was an aspect of Ra. Who is Ra? The Egyptian god, the sun god Ra. And what is a religion that produces a sun disc publicly holding up? There it is. There it is. Rooted in old paganism right there on the screen friends you do not have to go further than that eastern religion is sun worship we find that in ezekiel chapter 8 where 25 men were giving their back to the temple and their heads the foreheads they faced the east and they were worshiping the what they worship the sun towards the east when that happened you know from the background of the story, there were different things, apostasies, abomination that were causing Ezekiel chapter 8. The Lord showed Ezekiel the first thing he said, son of man, see this. And then he said, you think that is worse? See this, the next thing. And then this is the third one. He says, you, you, you think you've seen worse. This is the worst. And when he showed son worship, this is greater abomination the worst of all. As soon as he saw that, he said in verse 18, Therefore I will not also deal in therefore I will also deal in fury. Now I'm gonna act in my wrath. My eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And although they cry in mine ears, 
with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them, friends. This is the limit. This is the limit of God's grace. One son was if takes place. It causes great, it provokes God to wrath. He's about to step up and act on behalf of his law, on behalf of his people. God is going to act very soon. The next thing, Ezekiel chapter 9, begins with the sealing message and uh, plagues pouring out, God's punishment upon the people. The, but before the punishment of God, he says, mark my people. You know what that means? When the son the Lord is said, the son was if he said that God, it, it is the limit of God's mercy. God is about to stand up and seal his people. Sealing is going to take place. Friends, look at sun worship. People are crying out. This is from last year. I saw that they are crying out for 10 universal principles of climate justice. And they are promoting the fourth commandment, which the Lord said, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. They are saying the first day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Who are you going to believe? Man or God? Make your choice. Now, just this year, last month, November 16, the Pope published something called the Ecological Conversion 2023. He says Vatican will be the first city to implement ecological conversion and all the other nations should follow in our footsteps. Everyone should do that. Vatican launches sustainable mobility program called Ecological Conversion 2023. What does that um, entail? The Vatican City stated that it has been committed for many years to promote sustainable development through sociological policies of safeguarding the environment and providing energy-saving strategies. Now look at the red writing. Applying the principles of encyclical Laudato Si and the apostolic exhortation of Laudate Deum, that is the two documents that fight against climate change. So in essence, the ecological conversion is actually implementing doc, uh, implementing principles embedded in Laudato Si and Laudate Deum. Do you get that? Now, what is he actually calling to ecological conversion? What does conversion mean? A change of heart. Let's go to the papacy to uh, see um, what does this ecological conversion means there is Laudato Si movement on their website. They said they explain what is an ecological conversion. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis calls us to undergo an ecological conversion. But what is an ecological conversion? Laudato Si defines ecological conversion as the transformation of the heart and mind towards greater love for God, each other, and creation. It is the process of acknowledging our contribution to a social an ecological crisis and act in ways that nature's communion, healing and renewing our common home. Healing what? Our common home. Transforming the what? The heart. Transforming your heart to love the Sabbath, the papal Sabbath. Friends, the papacy is evangelizing. The papacy is evangelizing what is false doctrine, is unifying the world in a plot against God's people. Are you prepared to stand there? Look at what he says in 2, 3, 7 of the Laudato Si. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God and with with ourselves and with others and with the world. Who should we focus upon? He quotes Exodus chapter 23 verse 12 and says, All your animals should rest. You made seven men, seven. Refresh yourself. Green writing, it says, So the day of, it's the day of rest centered upon Eucharist, setting its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and for the people, for the family, for the poor, for the people, not for yourself not for consumerism. And there we see Sunday is meant to be a day of healing our relationship with God and with ourselves and with others. That is what they call 
there is the Jesuit, American Jesuit, defining what is ecological conversion, uh, setting aside Sunday as a holiday. Setting aside Sunday as a holiday. Friends, do you see the world trying to pose Sunday? Now let's go and see the true meaning of the Sabbath. In Matthew chapter 28, 11 verse 28 says the Bible, Come unto me all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you what? Give you rest. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of who? The Lord your God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, the men seven, nor thy maid seven, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gate. The question is why? Why should we keep Sabbath holy? Why should we do all those things? Why? For in six days... The Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in the midst and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed it and blessed the seventh day and allowed it. Why should you worship on that day? Because God is the creator. Worship him on Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, as the creator. But what does the papacy tell you? Worship him. On Sunday, as the Creator. Now let's look at what Cardinal Taxon from Vatican says on how we should keep the Sabbath. On the Sabbath day, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. Indeed, from the book of Deuteronomy, related with the book of Exodus, uh, Genesis, Sabbath has a sense of liberation, has the sense of giving respite and rest to any other system, any system. That is, uh, that is oppressed and that lives in bondage. Now, is about the day of liberation? That's true. Is about the day of rest? That's true. It is in time for seeing the needy, the, pe the poor people. That's true. But what Sabbath are they upholding? The people Sabbath, the wrong Sabbath, sun worship, a day in which it's deeply rooted in paganism, sun god, Ra worship, Egyptian sun god worship. Friends, are you celebrating that? There is the very thing, sun worship is the very thing that provoke God to great anger. When that is set up, the sealing work is, be, is going to begin. And where will you be standing? Are you going to believe in God and in his word? Because only the true Sabbath is actually a sign of believing in God. If you obey him and rest on his very day, then you are believing in him. Genesis, rather Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 says, For we which have believed do enter into rest. If you truly believe in the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the book of Romans says. Hearing by the word of God. If you believe in his word, you enter into his rest. And he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, he says, the works were already finished from the foundation of the world. God finished the work when he created Adam. He said, rest. You do not have to work. Rest. Your salvation is completed from the foundation of the world. Christ did it for you. Rest, believing in it. Believing in it. Verse 6, he says, See, therefore, that it remains that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached did not enter, did enter not because of unbelief. You see how he's mingling the whole rest in Canaan with our rest, physical rest, with spiritual rest. They did not enter into the land of Canaan where they should have rested. Why? Because of unbelief, they did not enter into the rest. Verse 9. There remained therefore a rest for the people of God, verse 10. For he that had entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his work, as God did from his. In the same way God rested. When did he rest? He rested on the seventh day. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. 1, 2 and 3. God rested. He blessed 
is sanctified. Let me ask you a question. Does God bless people? Of course, he does bless people so that they can enjoy the blessing placed upon them. Does God sanctify someone? Yes, the Bible says he likes to sanctify. But you know what? God actually blessed and sanctified a day as well. And on that day did he rest it. Friends, why did he bless the day and why did he sanctify the day so that he can bless a day in itself? I think not. I don't think so. He wanted the people to enter into that rest to enjoy the blessing placed upon that day so that the sanctification of that day can be their sanctification. You enter into that very day of rest you receive the blessing of the Sabbath. If you missed out on that, Sunday is no blessing, is no sanctification. And if you are prepared to receive the blessing of the Sabbath, you receive the blessing of the Sabbath. If you do not receive it, you receive the curse of God. Friends, whose side do you stand on? The papacy or God's side? Sin is the cause of climate change. One day, as we keep his holy law, we'll return to the land where there is no sin and no climate sins. Stand firm on Bible principle, believe in his word, and enter into his rest.